Roger. Will. Roger, thank you so much for coming back to sit down with Gail to talk about your latest book. You have a different title for it that you said was much more succinct. What was that? My original title, my working title, was simply Running's Greatest Stories. I quite like short titles like War and Peace or, yes. <laughs> or Persuasion or something like that. Well, uh, when the movie comes out, <laughs> I think they're going to go with your original Well, title. it's essentially great stories from running. Gail did an excellent interview at a future episode of Gotta Run With Will. We'll have that interview on the air. This one is a, what I call Gotta Run With Will moment. We've done many moments together. Uh, we touch always upon your, your two knee replacements. I believe Russell was first, followed by Mark. But they've had a, a recent adventures. I mean, they're, they're not teenagers, I think, or getting to be teenagers. Yes, Russell's close, close to a teenager. He's, he's 11 years old. He's a New Zealand partial uh, knee replacement. They're named after their surgeons. Uh, and sometimes, but not today, I draw smiley faces on my knees and, and they appear on camera. And they did about two years ago. They gave what I believe is the only live interview ever given in, in international media by two knee replacements. They, they were actually interviewed. Russell and Mark. <laughs> Russell and Mark. And they, and, they, and they answered all the questions. And it was a way of me communicating. To, this is for Podium Runner, which is now part of Outside, uh, working for my friend Jonathan Beverly as editor. And this is a way of communicating the science of running on knee replacements in a way which was amusing, you know, slightly flippant, but also amusing and accessible to readers who don't have the medical or scientific knowledge. And so I did it as an interview. And so, so the, the question was, so Russell, tell us about how you did your first race and, and what advice have you got? They both made very disparaging remarks about me. <laughs> <laughs> because they are young and strong, and I'm old and feeble. <laughs> so, so if there's a weak member of the triple of, of oh, the triumvirate, okay. it's it, it's me. And, and Russell and Mark are, are quite stroppy and young. Um, but they, that was a way of telling people, yes, all being well, it it should be possible for you to run on a knee replacement or two. Uh, you have to be very careful. Don't rush it. Take it very, very slowly. I described the process in which I ran for one minute in the course of, say, an hour's walk, and then three days later I ran for two minutes and, and or two separate minutes and then gradually increased, literally that. So just being very cautious because you're asking the body to adjust to a major change, and you, it just can't do that in a week. It's got to take years rather than weeks. Sounds like a future book be about your experiences and running with knee replacement and the strategies and best practices. Yes, that and also, of course, at the age I am now, which is which is now 83, I'm, I'm interested in the process of still trying to be a competitive runner. And I did a piece uh, on Outside Magazine, the running thing, about uh, about exactly that, about the experience. And you, you mentioned adventures in New Zealand. Uh, we were in New Zealand during COVID, and, and because the, the borders were closed, we were there, we have a home there. Instead of coming back to America as we normally would, we had to stay there because of the whole COVID situation. We ended up being there for two years, which was no hardship. It was a wonderful place to be. Uh, but we missed our American friends, like you, which is why I'm so happy to say, Will, genuinely Will. I <laughs> uh, haven't seen you for almost three years. So I was running track on the summer that's just gone. That is November to March, New Zealand's summer. I was running track because the government still had COVID restrictions, which would not permit more than 100 people together. And so that meant normal road running, park runs and things like that were out. But you could run track because you could cycle people in and have them so that there's not more than 100 people at any one time in the venue. That's the short explanation of why I was running round and round the track. And I wrote about this experience of suffering every runner's worst nightmare, which is to run on the track and be lapped by everybody else in the field and be totally humiliated uh, and finish laps and laps and laps behind them in a 3,000 meters or a 5,000 meters. And yet, 
breaking over 80 records. And I was writing about that duality and how hard it is to come to terms with it, how nice the young runners were to me. They would come by and they would say, go, Rog, you know, as, 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 they, as they let me. Uh, but clearly for a runner, you know, I've, I've, I've been good in my time and I've got some pride. And, and to be dropped instantly, the, the moment the horn went, they were gone. You know, it wasn't just a few yards in front. They were half a lap in front in almost no time. And they lapped me almost before I'd gone round once. Because I'm 83 years old <laughs> and running as fast as it's possible to do at that age. Yeah, yeah. But it's that is a challenge. And I think it, that probably is, is worth a book about writing, about yeah. r trying to run at this age because, well, I think we are, we as a society and as a sport, we are transforming what age is and means. You know, the thought that I can go out there and run serious track, and I've run road races since coming back to America, half marathon, 10K, on two new, new placements and at, eight, and at 83. Um, this is a, a, this a big breakthrough as to what this means for the aging process. Yeah, yeah. Russell was the first, and he was a partial. He's a partial. But Mark... He's the full month. He's a, he's a TKA, I think it's called total or TKA, a total knee replacement. replacement. Yes, he's American. He's it's named American. after Dr. Mark so Airstock. Have an attitude about being, you know, more robust than, than Russell. Or... Not sure about attitude, but there are things that I'm having to learn, and, and whether this is to do with Mark or not, I don't know. But but where are we now? About two years ago now, I was running well. I'd done the bet my best times over 5K and 10K, running virtual races at that time because there was nothing else. I was running virtual races at the same time as my friends in America. And I was in New Zealand at 8 o'clock in the morning running around the Wellington waterfront and Catherine got on the cell phone and said, go. And I started and our friends Norman and M Marty and Dennis started running on the Highland Rail Trail at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the Hudson Valley, and we raced each other. <laughs> and when the cops got interested in the fact that the, uh, uh, the, a friend who's an official had put some cones around for me to, to mark the exact spot, the cops got interested and she said, well, this, we've got this mad old character who's racing his friends in America. <laughs> and so the, the, the cops got in behind and were cheering me on to beat the Yanks. <laughs> because they, you shouldn't be out at that point of extreme lockdown. Oh, they, they were okay. questioning why I was out on the street, and, and perfectly properly, but they got in behind it. Right, right. But you were running by yourself. So. I was running by myself. But anyway, just after that, I was running on some rougher footing out near the beach and rolled an ankle and cracked the fibula, which is a little bone just above your ankle. And at this age, it took me six months for that to heal properly. Now, was that because that knee is more rigid and normally... You know, if you roll the ankle, the, the, the kind of the torque would... I don't know, but it's possible. So there are things that, that you know, we're, we're going to keep on learning and, and, and the science will keep on, will keep on developing. Well, I, I can't imagine a better person than yourself or with your, uh, your eye for history and detail and that you eventually will come up with a really nice guidebook or cookbook on how to run with knee replacement. Yes, but, and obviously that's part of what I was saying about getting rehabilitating slowly because clearly, you know, my body, there's, there's a bit bigger chunk of alien material in the left knee than there is in the right, and so there must be balance issues, and, and you know, yeah. you, I'm not conscious of them, but, but my body has had to learn yeah. to do all that again. Yeah, I would imagine that the bionics of these things are getting better. You know, maybe 20 years ago, you could not have done it. Just that That's true. Out. But 10 years from now, it could be a different story. But that leads me into a segue into something else. I, I've recently been diagnosed with a disease called, uh, well, the, uh, the technical term is multiple myeloma. Although what I have is smoldering myeloma, which is a precursor. And myeloma is a is a blood cancer. It attacks the uh, the plasma cells in the bone marrow. Will, I'm I'm sorry. I mean, you gave me that news before. I'm sorry to hear the news, but I'm glad you're so positive about it, and I'm glad that you're you're doing your usual educating job of letting people know so that other people are prepared and, and knowledgeable and can and can give you some support. 
I look forward to that. Mm. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Always the great host. Thank you. This has been a Gotta Run With Will moment. 